Hi, Radhika. Well, we've spoken of you know storytellers, but storytellers also need a platform. And what bigger, crazier platform is there today than social media? We have two people who know how to tell a story, especially on social media. They know how to convey what a brand wants. And uh, I'm delighted to have Radhika Bajoria, founder of Radically Yours, with us. She's also a LinkedIn influencer. So uh, maybe we can all get a few tips from her at the end on how to improve our profile visibility. Uh, Ejali Shete, she's an award-winning creative director uh, and the founder of Roll.Agency is here with us as well. Uh, lots to unpack, please, if you could have a seat. So Radhika, actually, let me ask you, how can somebody improve their LinkedIn? <laughs> Just Let's start with that. The platform, firstly. <laughs> I have so many people asking me that question without even downloading that app. I'm like, please create some storage space in your phone first, <laughs> then we'll have a chat. <laughs> well, why do you think that is? Is that, and I think this is a question to both of you. In fact, that's a good place to begin. Um, authenticity and social media. Do you think now there's this sudden awareness that uh, everything on social media might not necessarily be the truth and we don't want to be associated with that? What explains, in your opinion, first is hesitancy and two, at a larger level, whether it's a brand or an individual, how do you or do you even begin to be authentic on social media? I think you have to have your own voice. Today it's very easy to get carried away in this noisy world of opinions and influencers just to get those numbers and likes and comments on your post. But I think when you have your own purpose or why you're on the platform, mm -hmm. you then create your own audience, your own niche, your own you know segment of followers. So I think it's that is very important and I always started with that. I mean, so many people told me, why have you chosen a niche of business women hmm. specifically and only startup founders? Why don't you also maybe post about your selfies or about your travels to abroad on LinkedIn? I'm like, no, I know what LinkedIn stands for and I know what Instagram also stands for. And I will maintain that thin line of difference between the two, which unfortunately is forgotten in today's world. And maybe that's why this question also has popped up that how do people find their own authenticity? Because I think they have lost themselves self fully they're not connected to their own self and that's why social media is just like an add-on onto that yeah but i think it's very important to be self-aware of what you like first and then start writing about that on the platform mm -hmm. and i think similar to what she said about people i think the philosophy is pretty much the same for brands um we're we tend to jump onto this almost overstimulated um platform where there's you're constantly bombarded with content but you the mistake a lot of brands are making is jumping onto the platform before firstly identifying who you are mm. what is your positioning what is it what are your values um, what do you want your brand perception to be in front of your uh, consumers without knowing that if you start just building content running you know going after the herd mm. you're just going to become like a me too brand rather than creating your own niche and building your own space and voice into this um, overstimulated, over um, populated social world. Let me ask you, has it become almost easy? And I, perhaps easy is not the right word here, but has it become almost easy to market a brand or a product now in these in today's times when there are so many platforms, so many users, um, say compared to 10 years ago? No, uh, I'd say the opposite. Because like I said, there's, there's too much content being created. I think back in the day, we would have um, mass media, which was the main form of uh, communication, where that was where most of the base of the consumer was sitting, and it was just easy to reach out to them. It was more about interrupted communication rather than integrated. Now you have to become part of the conversation. You have to be integrating with what's going on in the culture. And with the new algorithms that have been created with social media, with the edge algorithm, it's not easy to get through to the exact audience that you are meeting. However, right now, I would say there is a less of wastage of media, mm. but it's super targeted, super niche. And uh, to reach out the kind of people to beat the algorithm, you have to work much harder. And uh, with the number of brands coming up, with the number of content creators coming up, you have to really try hard to create your niche, mm -hmm. which is, I think, becoming a challenge. So it's easy in a way where it's accessible, but it's harder to create your brand perception and your brand niche um, 
in this complex market. Radhika, I'll come to you in just a minute. You, you are based here in the UK, so you probably have good perspective on this. We are in the midst of a, an election here, and social media has become so big. And TikTok, I don't know if you've seen some of the TikTok videos that all the political parties here have been employing. Um, who would have thought, right, that an election campaign can be fought on TikTok and will get so many views? I, in fact, was one of the creators of some of the political campaigns for some of the big names. Shall we ask you, are you going to name and shame here? <laughs> How could I? <laughs> Give me a run for my money. No, um, it's actually a really engaging platform for people, uh, for politicians. And I don't think politicians are very different from brands. Hmm. They still have to talk about their values. They have to still be consistent about the... Uh, the promises they are making and the, the changes that they want to bring along. So much like brand communication, I think even political communication is more or less the same. It's just, it's just better, I feel, because you're now able to reach out to the Gen Z, which you would never, which would could never easily yeah. be reached out to, would be taken seriously. Now your content can be more engaging. I think gone are the days when you're taking yourself, taking yourself too seriously and then expecting others to take you equally seriously. Mm -hmm. So if you've seen the Count Bin Face campaign, oh, of course. Where you know, he's talking about serious issues, but he's giving it a lighter twist to give it humor. I think people are also riding on the power of humor, which uh, which was never part of politics anymore. So the reach is more, the uh, contribution, the conversations are a lot more, there's rapid spread, the virality is a lot more. But there's also, it's a double-edged sword, right? Mm -hmm. You can create eco chambers and yeah. you can, there can be a lot of backlash. But I think uh, the politicians have gotten on the right track, like they picked up on the right track and they're trying to outdo each other with creativity and yeah. engagement and entertaining content. Maybe so off stage, I can convince you to tell me who those political <laughs> parties are whom you've been creating content for. But yeah, Radhika, sorry, your take on um, whether it's become almost easy to sell an average product or an average brand now these days. I think there is an audience for everything. Which like is why? Said, is that easy? On TikTok I mean, also people are campaigning for elections. I mean, who would have thought? But there yeah. are people who are doing it. So yeah, you can of course sell it. And I don't want to take names of the brands, but they have grown to become unicorns these days. I mean, just because of the marketing that they've done through influencers on social media. Mm -hmm. So I think brands these days are becoming brands through social media, not through the, the actual real markets in person. So it's very much doable and I've seen many names. I don't want to be quoted in the newspapers the other day, so I'll refrain from taking the name. Well, we love we love it. You please feel free to say something as controversial as you it's want. It's good for you, not good for me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll strongly encourage you to do that. But no, uh, you mentioned social influencers, right? That's obviously been a huge disruptive factor, a huge disruptive feature in traditional marketing as well. How do you see these two coexisting? Again, social, how is... Uh, the so, are so, is social media influencing rather or influencers? Is it a long-term sustainable uh, project? I think that is the thing which is of the present and the future. I mean, if you don't have a presence on social media, especially if you're a consumer brand, mm. you're not going to make it in the long term. Of course, in the B2B segment, this doesn't matter as much because you're directly dealing with the businesses, which mostly aren't present on Instagram or LinkedIn for, for that matter. But if you have a consumer product and if you're not having a social media page, I mean, I God really bless you then. And I mean, on Shark Tank, if you've seen most of the consumer products who come to showcase, the first thing that the sharks ask them is that, can we see your social media page? Page. And if that is convincing enough, they take the conversation ahead. So suppose you are a really good product, but you're not on social media. You're saying that you're not going to sell. Is that is that no? Is that yeah, the reality. Where are you creating your visibility there? Yeah. So that, is that is that then the reality that if yes. you have the you can have the best product in the world, but unless you are on social media and you're active on social media, then you're not going to get an audience. Yeah, I mean, if Narendra Modi wasn't communicating with billions of people through social media, I mean, did you see his Lakshadweep campaign that went viral? He convinced everybody to believe that Lakshadweep is more nicer and better and bigger than Maldives. And yeah. that could only happen through social media. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the reality that we're living in today, mm -hmm. fortunately or unfortunately so. Is it, uh, let me ask you, is that fortunately or unfortunately? <laughs> For some, it is very fortunate because they're actually making quite a lot of fortune from it. Yeah. <laughs> and that fortune is, I mean, surpassing the salaries of many CEOs also. And yeah. this money that people are making, they're making at the age of 13 or 14 as well. You see so many gaming creators, they're earning like crores per month. Yeah. And that's like not even heard of. That was not even heard of like 10, 15 years back. Yeah. Absolutely. But now it is. And it's unfortunate for those who are actually doing the groundwork and thinking that, 
we will give our blood and sweat and we will be on the ground to make our sales we don't believe in the social media that's really unfortunate of them to For think that, that way <laughs> i would like to add to that actually yeah. i think social this influencer marketing is not a new concept hmm. it has been there from for ages like i think we all remember when amir khan and aishwarya rai even cindy crawford was trying to promote pepsi and mm -hmm. remember there were like the whole bollywood industry came out to spread out messages of social, of peace and um, uh, generally good messages it's just the medium has changed mm. and now it's gone from macro to micro it's mm. now become personalized communication but influencer marketing has kind of changed the whole landscape of marketing and it's um, it's it's i think it's for the better it's just you you end up wasting less media you end up reaching mm. a lot of clients directly you're they they more likely to buy products or get convinced about buying products from person that they care about or they know about or that they engage with rather than a brand coming and telling you on mass media or a celebrity coming and mm. telling you and there's so many amazing uh, examples like for instance even the apple uh, shot an iphone campaign yeah. that was backed on just user generated content yeah. it was a massive mass media campaign but it was only on the shoulders of uh, influencers even dove uh, real beauty there was um, red bull as a brand has been created on the back of just influencers yeah. just the adventures and the things mm -hmm. so it's not even the s small brands even the massive brands who have huge budgets are now relying on these smaller yeah. influencers and social media well you are from advertising how does that how, how do you have to now realign yourself to this new reality uh like i said i don't think as a concept it is different hmm. for me what is when you when you talk about like the commerce and then you talk about creativity i don't think there is any commerce without creativity and okay. end of the day the idea is king there is i keep saying this and i've been hearing this but money does not make ideas ideas and only ideas make money so when you have a great idea at the core of what you want to do and then you reach out to your relevant audiences your relevant influencers your relevant uh, tg who's authentic mm. who's going to carry forward your brand value if you're all aligned with what your brand's positioning and perception has to be you will only add on to it it'll become stronger and you will probably save a lot of money but reached out to a lot of people so i think we are kind of aligning ourselves in with in terms of what the new technology is how do the algorithms help us work it out yeah. but in at the core of it it's all about having a great idea yeah. to begin with and then build upon that with ideas the also need money by the way too <laughs> you can have the greatest idea but unless you have someone funding that's that the idea difference. that's the difference yeah. you know especially in brand marketing and brand communication i was at can last week and i've seen advertisements that have spent zero literally mm. zero on um earn and gotten millions of earned media and it's possible with a great idea with the help of social influencers so um that's a good note for everybody here who's got a good idea maybe you don't need money you might not have the youtube your pockets might not be full <laughs> but <laughs> you can contact ajali she'll tell you how exactly to make that happen <laughs> yeah, but you to me <laughs> you I'm also person. yeah you were mentioning multicultural advertising as well T tell us more about that um that's um well, i've worked in india and i worked in malaysia and i worked in the uk and i feel like there is a bit of a culture gap here because especially in the agency structures there is only there is a lot of homogeneity which creates a lot of homogeneous ideas so i feel like with um with getting more diverse people into the conversation in fact in the, on the creator sides and on the advertising agency sides the the lack of diversity is creating lack of uh, content reaching the right kind of audiences which is where my agency has stepped in and created this this trying to fill this culture gap between uh, connecting the brands that are from diverse backgrounds to the diverse audience in the language that they understand and not stereotyping everyone mm. not having a one size fit all mm -hmm. so um, that's been an interesting journey yeah. i think there's a lot of to, there's a lot of work to be done in that area mm -hmm. we, we are running out of time i want to ask both of you if you could tell brands the three absolute big no nos and three things that you must do we know at least one is be on social media so we let's say two things that you must do uh, what are the let's start with the don'ts the three things that brands should absolutely not do don't overpay the influencers don't just pay what they ask for but pay your employees <laughs> of course yeah of course <laughs> does it come from a personal experience no no not okay. at all <laughs> <laughs> okay you sounded like that so no, no. yeah <laughs> okay yeah so that is one the second is that uh, 
really do not create something for the heck of it. Don't jump onto the bandwagon of moment marketing that, you know, if suppose now something is out there and about there, mm -hmm. doesn't mean you'll put your money onto that star and take them in as your brand ambassador and you think that that, that will sell. That won't. Mm -hmm. So that's the second. And the third is that uh, do not really uh, go by the naysayers because there are many in the world. Okay. Follow that's useful for life as life. well. I know. That's great advice for life just as for well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, brands are emotional human beings behind the names that you see, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. the advice to those human beings. Okay. Yeah. Um, first, I'd say know the difference between salesmanship and showmanship. Salesmanship is very momentary. Now sell this, get it done, just get the money and let, we'll think about it later. Mm -hmm. But showmanship is something that's going to create a brand for a long time. It's going to keep giving you sustainable results. So go for showmanship, don't go for salesmanship. Even though it sounds attractive and it, um, you know, easy, it's a low hanging fruit. Make those sacrifices. Um, secondly, again, don't follow the herd. Don't just do because others are doing. Know yourself before you do it. Know why you're doing it. Know your purpose. Know your positioning. Know your strategy very well. Do not forget what you what you stand for. And um, thirdly, what would I say? Um, yeah, just don't don't make don't make poor choices in in choosing your influencers just because you <laughs> want a sensation. Um, refrain yourself from creating. Um, um, controversies make meaningful connections uh, since both of you have mentioned this also let me just ask you quickly do you think the era of these big superstars endorsing products now has given way to uh, less expensive but social media influencers with huge following right so you're not going to probably see an Amitabh Bachchan endorse a hundred products but you will see some people who a lot of people think are unknown but have a huge following yeah, no, that, I have seen that massive shift. It's, it's, it's literally a paradigm shift in terms of your influencers that you use for marketing from you not only save a lot of money, but you actually reach out to people, go into their homes and mm. stop interact, interrupting them and ra rather start having a two-way communication and a conversation, which was never the case uh, in the, like back in the day. And, and I'm not talking about just small brands who can afford, but even Dove is only talking about real women and bringing people from real women into the industry and putting them up on billboards. So uh, it's it's definitely making that massive shift. What do you think, Radhika? Do you think that the, that era? I mean, I just want to ask a question to everyone here. Have you seen uh, Mercedes, Rolex, anybody like get a big celebrity ambassador? I don't think so. That's mm -hmm. never the case, right? Mercedes and Rolex and these people would involve more into uh, DM, like direct marketing yeah. rather than mass media marketing. Yeah. So their whole marketing strategy is always focused on personal uh, communication with the people of a certain Yeah, standard. But that so also helps them maintain that class and elegance which they sell. So I think you really have to get to know your product and then appoint anybody. Yeah. That's yeah. like the bottom line of it. And I don't know how many people saw Nancy Tiagi at Cannes Film Festival. I mean, she's not a great fashion designer, but now she's getting orders from people like Sonam Kapoor and most of the big Hollywood celebrities also. So social media can create and destroy stars from nowhere to like, you know, yeah. the skies as well. So I was going to say it yeah. can destroy as well. And that is the dark <laughs> oh, side. Oh, it is a double-edged sword. Yeah. It is yeah. definitely a double-edged yeah, sword. Yeah, we probably we should be careful. We should have a separate conversation <laughs> on the dark side of social media as well. Yeah. Uh, we're running out of time. I want to ask you, very quickly, just the one thing, because we don't have enough time for two, the one thing besides being on social media that a brand should do in one sentence only. Can I go? Yeah. 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 yeah um, be authentic. Just know yourself and stay, stick to your strategy and be consistent with doing it. If not, and don't look at short term goals. Like if you're constantly repeating and reinforcing your message in the long term, you'll have a far bigger gain. Mm -hmm. I have a very nice and clear messaging for brands sponsor shows like india global forum <laughs> we can all applaud for that one <laughs> i think that's yes i think that will be the yeah. best one no don't you absolutely agree? i yeah. agree yes i think that's a great way to end and i'm going to go speak to you about yeah. uh, like some social media tips from you yeah. off stage because we're <laughs> completely out of time thank ladies you. thank you so much really enjoyed this thank conversation you so much. just quickly oh yeah are we are we taking pictures <laughs>